So this video is on parallel and perpendicular lines. So let's start with parallel lines. And parallel lines, um, as you might already know, parallel lines are two lines that will n that never meet, and they will always be the same distance apart. So let's represent this graphically. Let's draw two uh, parallel uh, lines. Let's draw line A in red and we'll draw it looking something like this. We'll put, label this as A. And let's draw line B in blue and let's label, uh, let's draw it something like this. And let's label it B. And these two lines are parallel because they are always the same distance apart and therefore as they're always the same distance apart they will never actually meet each other they will never actually intersect now the key thing for this chapter that you need to know is that parallel lines have the same gradient so let's say that uh, line A has a gradient of 2. That means that line B will also have a gradient of 2. They have the exact same gradient. The only difference between the two lines actually is their y-intercept. Apart from that, their gradients are the exact same. And it is very common for them to use this and ask this in exams uh, to, um, for you to understand how parallel line works in terms of their gradients. So this is a very common exam question they could ask you. They could say line A has a gradient of 1 over 5 and line B is parallel to line A. Now they don't give you the gradient of line B, but as line B is parallel to line A, you can then say that the gradient of line B is going to be 1 over 5. It's going to be the same as line A. So the gradient of line B, because there's two lines here, I'm just going to use this little subscript that says B down here just to represent that I'm talking about B. The gradient of B is going to be 1 over 5. And as we know a point on line B, we know that line B passes through 5 minus 7, we can then uh, use the formula y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. And we can therefore plug in the values as y minus y1, which is going to be minus 7, so it's going to be plus 7, is equal to m, which we found to be 1 over 5, 1 over 5 x minus 5. We can expand this to do y plus 7 is equal to 1 over 5 x minus 1. Then we can rearrange this by putting y plus 7 onto the other side, let's say, and do 1 over 5 x minus y minus 8 is equal to 0. Remember we need to make all the numbers integers so in order to do this we're going to times everything by 5 to get x minus 5y minus 40 is equal to 0 and this is a valid uh, equation of line b in the form ax plus by plus c is equal to 0. Now let's move on to perpendicular lines. So perpendicular lines are lines that intersect at an angle of 90 degrees. So let's show what this means graphically. So let's say that line A looks something like this here, and we'll label this as line A. If line B is perpendicular to line A, then line B is going to look like this here and the point at which they intersect is going to be a 90 degree right angle like this. Now the key thing for this chapter that you need to know is that for two perpendicular lines their gradients are going to be negative reciprocals of each other. Now explain what this means because this might not make too much sense. A reciprocal is basically when you flip the number. Another way of saying it is when it's 1 divided by the number. So let's say that the gradient of A is M. As uh, B is perpendicular to A, the gradient of B is going to be the reciprocal of A and it's going to be 1 over M. But remember, it's the negative 
reciprocal, so it's actually going to be minus 1 over m. So let's put this uh, into number form. So let's say that the gradient of a is equal to 2. That means that the gradient of b is going to be minus 1 over 2 because you flip the uh, number so you put 1 on the top. Let's say that the gradient of a is equal to minus 5 over 3. The gradient of b, because it's perpendicular, is going to be the negative reciprocal. So as it's a negative reciprocal, actually the negative uh, is going to go away and it's going to be positive this time. And it's going to be flip the fraction, so it's going to be 3 over 5. And then finally, if uh, the um, gradient of a is 1 over 4, then the gradient of b is going to be minus 4 because we flip uh, it and we put a negative um, at the uh, the front. And this is uh, the key thing that you need to remember, this idea of negative reciprocals for uh, perpendicular lines. Now, really quick, I've never had to use this fact, but it pops up in the book and I've seen it pop up in a few other uh, kind of uh, resources as well. So just in case it comes up, two lines are also perpendicular to each other if the product of their gradients is equal to minus one. This is very easy to see if you think about it. The products of their gradients equal to minus one. So two perpendicular lines are going to have a gradient of m and minus 1 over m and if you do the product of these the m's are going to cancel out so it's just going to be minus 1. That's quite easy to see. I've never seen that, uh, I've never had to use that information but just because it's said quite a bit I thought I'd um, put it uh, in here. And once again it is very common of them to uh, ask exam questions based on perpendicular line gradients and you need to know that they are negative reciprocals of each other. So this is a very common exam question that they could ask, uh, where they say line A has a gradient of 3 over 4 and line B is perpendicular to line A. So from this we can find the gradient of line B as being the negative reciprocal of 3 over 4 as line A and line B are perpendicular. So the gradient of line B is going to be minus 4 over 3. Then we can use the equation y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1 because we have a coordinate on line b so we can write this as y minus minus 7 which would be plus 7 is equal to minus 4 over 3 x minus minus 3 which would be plus 3 and then we could expand this to get minus 4 over 3 x minus 4 we can bring this onto the other side to do 4 over 3 x plus y plus 11 is equal to 0. Remember we need to make it all integers and this uh, coefficient of x is not an integer. So if we times everything by 3 it will be 4x plus 3y plus 33 is equal to 0. And this is uh, one of the correct answers to uh, the question for finding the equation for line B in the form. Of course, again, you could do it uh, like minus 4x, minus 3y, minus 33 if you wanted to. This would be correct as well. But this is uh, one of the correct answers. So here's a question on parallel and perpendicular lines. So pause the video, have a go, and I'll go through the answer in about five seconds. So for part A, we need to find the value of k, aka we need to find the gradient of line A. Now we're told that line B is perpendicular to line A, and we're able to figure out the gradient of line B because we are given two points on the line B. So we can figure out the gradient of line B by doing 7 minus 2 over 3 minus 1 and if we figure this out this will be 5 over 2. So as line B is perpendicular to line A we can find that the gradient of line A is therefore going to be the negative reciprocal of 5 over 2 so it's going to be minus 2 over 5 and therefore this is going to be the value of K. K is going to be minus 2 over 5. So for part B, this is very easy. So from the previous uh, question, we found the gradient of line B. And as we have uh, a point on line B, we actually have two points, but we can use either. So I'm just going to use 
uh, this one here. We can therefore use the formula y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. So we can write this out as y minus 2 is equal to 5 over 2 x minus 1. We can expand this to y minus 2 is equal to 5 over 2 x minus 5 over 2 and we can put uh, this onto the other side to do 5 over 2 x minus y minus a half is equal to 0. Remember that everything needs to be integers though and we can do this if we times everything by 2 so we can call this 5 x minus 2 y minus 1 is equal to 0. And this is the final answer.